Hey, how are you all doing? Welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kay Vandavani, the Total Connector. Now, after my you know deep, intense, uh, fascinating talks with Jeff Booth, T2 Skibble, or another special episode, Hasler Cook and Torsten Hoffman, the filmmaker, I'm really excited to announce the next talk is going to be with Carla Rosenbaum, the author of Rock and Bitcoin, and Knut Swanholm, the author of... Um, Bitcoin uh, uh, Independence uh, Reimagined, that was his last book, Uh, it's already on the way to be translated into German, uh, or it's already been translated maybe, and his first book was uh, Sovereignty Through Mathematics. So really brilliant minds, uh, you know, highly intellectual, but, but, you know, they're they're so skilled, so talented to break down the language, to, to break down the technical jargon. And, um, and terminology and really make, uh, make this, this Bitcoin space, even the technical, technological aspects really accessible to people. But this is not what the talk is gonna be about. It's again, in continuation of uh, the idea that I had and written down in the short brainstorm article, Human Life Rooted in Bitcoin, which is dedicated to all children, all born and unborn children, to, to the total humanity. And again, you know, we gotta ask ourselves, how do we envision practically concrete ideas right tangibly the the daily life of the average person out there once we are in a bitcoinized hyper bitcoinized world in free private cities rooted in bitcoin with truly free market principles with true capitalism with true freedom uh with true ethos of of bitcoin and you know in an unleashing of unimaginable power of scientific technological uh, take you know uh, creativity and innovation zero to one innovation totally new infrastructures on every level you can think of so it's all about now visualizing it translating this knowledge the bigger picture into a short video teaser trailer and then and then you know uh, have it then uh, crowdfunded produce it uh, and make it really really strong you know so that people not only feel it in the hearts but they understand they, com- they comprehend you know the question why bitcoin you know what's the intention what's the real vision you know what is what is re- what is real it's it's not utopian it's not dystopian it's not sci-fi it's reality but we we need to have that in- intention we need to have that that clear vision what are we trying to achieve here not only for you know, for a small circle of people, but, you know, for total humanity, like structurally transformational change. I'm, I'm really talking about structural transformation and evolutionary transformation on every level you can think of. So without further ado, this is my talk with Carla Rosenbaum and Cruz Vanham. Let me know what you think, like, retweet, share, follow me, subscribe, please, uh, write a positive review, helps a lot and share this video, share this interview, share this podcast. And thanks so much for your support, and talk to you soon. You can see me a bit better now. Welcome to the Total Connector show and the Total Bitcoin Podcast show. My name is Kevan Davani. I'm so excited to have uh, uh, my two special guests back again, uh, Carla Rosenbaum and Knut Swanholm, uh, some of the best renowned and really uh, brightest authors on Bitcoin and Bitcoin's rabbit hole. So Carla Rosenbaum is the author of Grokking uh, Bitcoin, where he, you know, uh, brilliantly really illustrates and, and explains the technical topics, makes it really accessible. And Knut Svalholm is the author of uh, already, you know, even translated into German. Some of the uh, some of his books is um, Sovereignty Through Mathematics and Independence Reimagined. And by the way, Carla's welcome. book is also in German, by the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome to the show. I didn't know you, you, you also wrote another book. It's called Three Minute Reads on, on Bitcoin. Was that your first book? Cool. Yeah, it's just a prototype. That, that's just like uh, uh, my articles that year compiled into a book. It's oh. So pay no attention to that. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, yeah. So. We were just talking about uh, free markets uh, and beer, I think, <laughs> in Sweden. <laughs> so, <laughs> how is the free market situation in Sweden? It's getting slightly better over time. Uh, it's a long 
process, though. I mean, in Sweden, most uh, services were institutional or, or state run, run by state. Uh, for example, the pharmacists, the pharmacists were uh, monopolized before, but they're now there is now a free market for pharmacists. Uh, so it's it's getting better, I think. Uh, I don't know if if anything speaks against that, Knut. Do you have any counter examples? Yeah, I, w I would say it. It's getting better compared to how Sweden was before, but of course we still have the same problem as every every other country with inflationary currencies, which makes like we have only pseudo free markets like everywhere everywhere else, uh, <laughs> as I view it. But uh, Sweden is uh, definitely has proven its point by you know by not uh, uh, somehow imitating or, or you know, replicating the, all these lockdown measures which have taken place everywhere else. I mean, these insane lockdown measures. Um, so they've actually proven just through, you know, uh, numbers by showing that, you know, by not uh, executing these lockdown measures, they have, what, some of the lowest can you can you talk about that a little bit about the COVID situation, uh, the so-called COVID situation in Sweden? Yeah, uh, we had a slight uh, slight uh, uh, the deaths increased, of course, in Sweden. But now they have uh, moved back, and we actually have negative uh, uh, excessive deaths now because of COVID. Uh, so people who should have died anyway, died just a little bit earlier. Um, so, so it seems to have worked out pretty fine in Sweden. And I think maybe you could attribute this to, to uh, uh, the genius of the government, uh, but, but I'm not sure. Eric Wall, for example, had a nice uh, thread on Twitter where he argued that Swedish position, Sweden's position on this is not because of, of some uh, uh, brilliant minds or or uh, 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 yeah it, it's more like uh, uh, it's just a, a reluctancy to to action mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, i'm not sure i agree with that but uh, because I, I think there is some level of trust in the experts from from the politician side the politicians mm -hmm. trust the experts in sweden uh, so I, I think i think it's might be a little bit of both. Uh, I wouldn't say it's just a reluctancy of, uh, for action. It's just it's actually uh, driven by some uh, sci science as well. Yeah, but I, I would say the scientists are reluctant to act as well, because uh, uh, which is partly because they're afraid to get the blame. But uh, in general, I think we. Swedes in general ha are reluctant. We're, we're afraid of conflict and reluctant to act. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like in our DNA. <laughs> but uh, in in this particular case, I'm very happy to live here beca because of the the lack of lockdowns and the lack of uh, like draconian measures. Uh, uh, as I guess we all are. And when you say that people die, but they died a bit earlier, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's another way of looking at that because it sounds a bit funny. But uh, yeah. I would say that a, a lockdown steals time from people's lives as well. So if you lock uh, 10 million people down for uh, for two weeks, that's like stealing two weeks times 10 million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I... Uh, of, of life you lifetime from people so so uh, a lockdown is also a death sentence in a way as are taxes and as are inflation mm -hmm. <laughs> do you have to wear masks in in like like over here in austria like in public transportation and and gross and supermarkets and you know no no wow. not really they're wow. voluntary okay. uh, Amazing. We we just have guidelines like keep your distances and wash your hands a lot. Okay. That's basically that's, that's, it. And that's sounds rational. <laughs> what you guys doing? Yeah. 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 Some things are prohibited. You can't uh, you can't uh, organize things with more than fifty people. For example, 
uh, like concerts and stuff with more than 50 people is prohibited. And uh, uh, high schools were closed, but they have reopened now again. Yeah, they, yeah, they were. Uh, they they had their classes online instead. Yeah. Uh, most high schools and the universities they mm. they had their classes online, and I guess the universities still have that to uh, to quite a large extent. Uh, and we have like at at my job where we're working for like half the team is working uh, on location for a week, and then there's a, the other half of the team. So we switch. We have a week each, so mm -hmm. there's fewer people in the office, at least on paper. <laughs> You know, Sweden, uh, I mean, I've never been to Sweden, but, uh, you know, I heard so many people, I, I myself, you know, have a, a high, what do you call it, high opinion, or uh, somehow I adore somehow the situation in, in Sweden, because you guys, especially in a lot of um, fields, you know, would it be at least what it, it appears to be, you know, like uh, gender equality, like is... Uh, is that true? Like, like don't is go it... there, Kevin. <laughs> don't go there. The, okay, this is this is now. sort of a this there is sort is... of a taboo topic here. Okay, gotcha. Because gotcha. you're uh, you you're sort of not allowed to have certain opinions, <laughs> uh, and that is yeah the all, all the progress we're making in gender equality and gay rights and whatever are uh, are like balanced out by. Uh, <laughs> by a uh, decrease in freedom of expression. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the mild way of putting it. Uh, and I, w I won't throw... My <laughs> uh, I won't give up any secrets on my opinions on this and that, because there's a real threat. I would lose my job if I had the wrong opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Jacobson, what's his name? David Jacobson, Peter Jacobson, he... he, he... There's been a lot of you know discussions and, and uh, controversial discussions going on what Sweden is concerned. But anyway, let's go to um, to this 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 very specific topic. I, I wanted to talk to you about and wanted to hear your thoughts, your ideas. I want to brainstorm with you about it. So so after I had you know after I read the book of Jeff Booth and of Titus Gebel, Free Private Cities. And Jeff Booth's book, you know, is just, you know, everybody just loves Jeff because he breaks down uh, complex, seemingly complex things into really simple language where you, where you begin to understand the bigger picture, you know, with uh, the subtitle of his book. I mean, uh, The Price of Tomorrow is the book and the subtitle is deflation, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. So I sat down, um, we had a chat with Stephanie von Jan. She was my co-moderator together with uh, Titus Gebel and Jeff Booth. And even before that, I had somehow this this uh, inspirational enlightenment. You know, what if we could, you know, like, make a movie? Because we, we, you know, there's like you guys. You know, you write books, you you write articles. There's a bunch of podcasts, uh, materials, documentaries. There's so much educational materials out there, in order to understand the root causes, right, of this of this shit that we are in. This whole centralized. Inf inflationary and soon hyperinflationary world we're going in, in it. Uh, the, uh, lit, uh, the so-called legalized theft system uh, perpetrated by central banks and governments, the oppressive regimes, you know, I mean, everything you can think of uh, goes pretty back, goes back to the, to the root of the money system or the fiat money system. But I always try to ask my guests on my show, as you've known, you know, I try to ask them like, what is it? How do you envision humanity? Like, what is what is what does the future like? If an average person comes up to you and say, "Okay, I got it now. I understand all the root causes. I've read tons of books, articles, you know, listened to a bunch of podcasts, and now I understand the root causes. I get it now. I get a big, bigger picture. Now, if Bitcoin, and I, you know, we all agree that, but I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate here, sort of, you know, like, what if an average person comes up to you and say, okay, you know, I got it now, but what does the future hold for us? Like, once Bitcoin is not necessarily hyper Bitcoinized, but if we have, let's say we have a miniaturized human civilization, we have a free private cities, a citadel city, whatever you want to call it, um, and we have, like, true free market principles. We have free capitalism. 
we have a provider, uh, a service provider that, that protects your liberty, health, life, um, your property, and everything else is free market. And, and the monetary root layer is all rooted in Bitcoin. What would the daily life of the average person look like? Right? What is the average person about to expect? Because I can give you, it's funny, if you ask me, I have a very, very concrete and specific vision and picture what the future is going to look like with it in 10 years or 30 years. So, please. Uh, shall I begin? Please. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's always tricky to predict the future and it's, uh, yeah, uh, I, I see why people are re reluctant to go there and as as have I been uh, s several times but I think uh, it it all depends on how how deep into hyper bitcoinization we are but the more the more of a, a sound money free market economy we have the less violence there will be in society and the and we will put in fewer hours per day uh, to work and this is mainly because what 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 i think everyone is missing uh, in their uh, thinking when when uh, when arguing for universal basic income uh, and stuff like that and uh, social programs is that to a, to a poor person lower prices are more important than than uh, than an income like lower prices is good for for everyone and that's what deflation does, and that's what uh, a sound money free market economy will do. And you will have to work, but you will not have to work as much. If we had a functioning global free market sound money system, uh, the effort that a single person would have to put in would be a lot less uh, in order to uh, afford a lot more. Because uh, as I say in, in Independence Reimagine, uh, right now, uh, money, the money is the the cheapest thing to produce there is. So uh, what that leads to is that the prices of everything else goes up over time. Uh, ex except for stuff that is actually even cheaper to produce per day than money. And that used to be electronics because they had such an exponential uh, lowering of the price per, per, per megabyte because of uh, how, how the... Uh, manufacturing industry for those things uh, exploded during the last 30 years or so but Moore's law has sort of leveled out a bit and I think that is partly due to we've hit sort of a ceiling there of how small the chips can get but there's also uh, the the monetary aspect that the, the money is cheaper and cheaper to produce every day and if it was the other way around if money the money we used was the absolutely most expensive thing there was to produce, then the prices of everything else would go down in comparison to that. And that is what we're seeing in Bitcoin. We're, we're seeing it in, in, well, it's actually a fast forward, but it feels like slow motion because it lingers around 10,000 for a while. But, but what we've seen over 11 years is the prices uh, denominate of everything else denominated in Bitcoin has gone down and they've gone down uh, a lot <laughs> prices of everything else goes down over time compared to the money that is the hardest thing to produce and the most expensive thing to produce in society so this is this is the basic uh, the, that was the basic argument for gold and it's even more true for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is better than gold in every way it's more scarce and it's teleportable and it's magic and you can assign it to anything. You can print a QR code and put it to your old Volvo and make your Volvo more valuable than a Lamborghini. And without any effort, you can, you can hide an open dime uh, in, an, in a geocaching thing for a kid to find with $10 million in it. You can remember 24 words and go wherever you want. It's, it, it's, a, it's a new world. And as, a, as I've been arguing in, my latest article in Citadel 21, <laughs> the um, imagine a world in which the most part of, of, like the biggest part of people's wealth were in their heads or somewhere un unconfiscatable. Then in order to 
extract value from your fellow man, you would have to provide something of value for them rather than to coerce them and force them into uh, behaving in certain ways, which is what we're doing now. We're coercing people into behaving in certain ways. If you don't pay your taxes, sooner or later you will end up in jail. Uh, and that is coercion. Uh, so from a strict moral standpoint, uh, I believe a true sound money free market economy uh, would benefit everyone in ways we cannot imagine because of the I, lower prices yeah yeah i'm gonna take a, a, a little bit uh, a little bit uh, more modest stance here i think uh but i agree on, on most of your points but uh if if we want to imagine a sound money world uh, or a hyper bitcoinization world uh, we can look at how the world was looking when we had a hyper goldized uh, world. Uh, gold was pretty hard money. So I, th I think we can get some hints by looking at, at history and see how the world looked then. Uh, and I think people had sex and people had to eat and have sex. Uh, so I think people will continue doing that. Um, so And if we look at the, to, to, to talk about your stuff with the banks and freedom and, and all that stuff, uh, we, today we have the state at the top and we have uh, some, uh, the Fed in the US, the central bank, and you have uh, the big banks and you have the retail banks and you have the businesses and you have the people in a great, huge pyramid. And the current system benefits the ones at the top, of course, uh, today. And Bitcoin reverses that process. Uh, so Bitcoin benefits the people at the bottom the most. And the people who have, who have much most to lose is at the top. Uh, so I think Bitcoin will be a huge liberating force for people, just as, uh, just as you said. And, yeah. Yeah, I love your I love your it's fundamental just... approach. I love your uh, the, 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 you know you know what really drives me uh, when I think about uh, you know the future a realistic future. It's not you know I'm not talking about some utopian or dystopian or sci-fi. I'm talking about like the science and technology we have already. If that could be unleashed through the monetary economical structure. Just imagine, you just said it, just people cannot even imagine what future could look like. But I mean, I can, maybe, maybe, we, maybe, maybe the three of us, you know, maybe we've somehow read a lot of things or know what, what the real potential is, you know, whether it be on a scientific level, technological level, resources, you know, all these uh, things that, uh, that maybe even have been somehow uh, even uh, somehow suppressed or, or compartmentalized, you know, in the military industrial sector. This is what, I'm this is what makes me really excited. Like uh, on an infrastructural level, would it be transportation, energy yeah. production, energy efficiency, recycling, environmental technologies, yeah. medicine, anti-aging, molecular biology, genetics. I mean, every field you can think of, once this power is unleashed, once we have free market principles, as anything, everything you said, I totally agree with you. But I'm just saying, I see a much, much more exponential. And you know, Jeff Wood said it himself. He said, "Technology, you can't stop that. It, it, technology is deflationary. It has a huge power. So, it, it, so central banks, governments are actually fighting against uh, gravitation." He says. So, so if if this exponential curvature, you know, is um, uh, accelerates. Every whatever, 18 months, two years, you know, and I'm not talking about like, you know, I don't want to restrict it because most people restrict it like to information technologies, AI, robotics, you know, yeah, I mean, a little bit boring for me, for me, the real exciting stuff comes in the other sectors, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and what if people really then have, you know, just need to work uh, voluntarily because they love their job, like 15 to 20 hours per week maximum. And the rest, they just contribute with whatever they want to contribute with, whether it be creativity, teaching children, doing experiments, doing research, doing science. You know, let's zoom a little bit out. 
Or habitation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, an additional point to the, to the news question. Uh, the, the world has not been on a gold standard for quite some time now. And all the gold standards were before, uh, before mass transportation, before mass media, and definitely before the internet. So we can't really, well, it's, it's a comparison to make, but we have to take into account how, how much faster progress we have in every, every sector now, even, even though we have defla inflationary currencies. So, like you said, Je Jeff Booth compared uh, uh, techn technological progress to uh, gravitation. You can't really stop it. And, uh, uh, w w but with a free market sound money economy, that, that process would be accelerate in, in unimaginable ways. And I, I, we talk about utopias and everything, but I, I really think like on a, on a yearly scale, not, not, not much happens in a year, but on a 10 year scale, a lot can happen. Just look back 10 years uh, from, look at a movie uh, from 2010 and the, just a low budget movie and the special effects. You can make them all on your, on your phone now. Uh, so a lot can happen in 10 years. But to your question there about uh, what I think the future will look like, I mean, uh, look at this conversation we're having now. Uh, but me and Kalle could do this because we had like a spare hour in the evening. And we we have that spare hour because we have quite well-paying jobs and a, a quite stable situation at home so we have a bit of time over to to chit chat about this stuff and write our books and whatever we we choose to do with our time but if if we had uh, if we had bitcoin we would be working a lot less for for the same amount of <laughs> like time freedom i i believe and uh, we uh, you have to remember with with technological revolutions that every tool that mankind has ever come up with uh, uh, has been invented in order to save him time from like the the hair trimmer to the lawn mower to the computer to the to the car to to whatever whatever you want it's it's there to save time uh, and so that's what tools do they save us time and uh, if if we had a, a fully functional free market, we, we would have a lot more time on our hands because what has basically happened the last fifty years is that we invented all the tools, but we're still we're still stuck in the fucking hamster's wheel all day, and and uh, doing the same old things like working the same amount of time, even though we invented all of these tools, and it's bizarre. It should be the other way around. The, the more tools we invent, the less we should work. <laughs> so, uh, but that's what fiat has done to us. And, and it's so hard to see because you work about the same amount as you did. Like, look at the 50s where uh, a, a single salary could provide a family of 10 children uh, with a, a good living standard. And nowadays, both, uh, both parents have to work and both parents have to take care of the kids. And both parents have to do commute and do whatever, everything. So, like, we haven't really saved any time. And I think the fiat system is the main arch enemy, <laughs> the, the main villain here that has caused this to happen this, this way. Yeah. And we talk about hyper Bitcoinization, but uh, I'm not so sure yet that Bitcoin can accommodate the whole world's wealth. Uh, technology, te technically, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not convinced about that. Uh, I think it might. Uh, there's a good chance, probably, uh, with layer two technologies and all that. Uh, but we need to stay humble uh, to the to the technology, and we we just we can't just yet say that we will be able to hyper bitcoinize the world um but i i sincerely hope so and i i also think that that's that that transition will, will be peaceful and i think that the slower the process 
the more peaceful it yeah. will be. Uh, I that, that's my that's my hope at least. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I'm afraid it will be bloody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, powerful states just won't uh, give up that easily. Um, yeah. Oh, I I've been thinking about that lo a lot lately about how how violent the whole thing can be or will be, but the 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 the, the more I think about it, the more I think uh, like. What Bitcoin does, it is it disincentivizes uh, uh, coercion. So, so it it mitigates the risk, and uh, regardless of how violent it will be, it will be less violent than if we didn't have Bitcoin. And that's the important part. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I I agree. Though, but those are valid. Callous points are valid. We don't know if we can accommodate accommodate the whole world economy in Bitcoin, and we don't know if hyper Bitcoinization is a real scenario. But I still feel, feel that there's, there's some value to thinking about these things and to imagining these things and putting the thoughts out there because it might just trigger something in another person's brain and people might start seeing things a bit differently. And uh, even if it isn't Bitcoin that does it, like if we go back to gold standard or whatever, that's still better than what we have now. So, uh, so thinking about these things are, is important. Yeah. And, you know, people, I mean, you can sense that literally wherever you are, you can sense people have fears. They have fears uh, uh, confronting their own fears. So, so so I thought, you know, that's that's the reason I wrote this short brainstormed article that I sent you guys is like I, I was like, what if we can visualize this? What if it what if it's this? What if the timing is so mature right now? Because people sense it, they don't know what's coming. You know, is it going to be the euro is going to be in a crash? Uh, is the euro going to crash by, by next year? Because everything, uh, you know, not only the banks but uh, a lot of, you know, the whole economy is going to be insolvent, uh, and they're going to be so, uh, you know, uh, so indebted uh, in uh, because of the European Central Bank, or you know, you take any other places, you know, would it be in America or in Sweden? I mean, people. I think sense there's there's a change coming, there's a transformation coming. So, so as you said, the transition. I totally agree with you. The transition is the key. It's not going to be totally frictionless. There is going to be some kind of chaos. There is going to be some kind of pa panic and friction and, uh, yeah, maybe even uh, you know, um, uh, maybe even blood. You know, we don't know that. But I think Bitcoin facilitates that trans that transition. So uh, this article that I sent you guys is, you know, this is sort of for me the the brainstorming for for an ID for a, for a film movie for a film, uh, would it be a documentary or a, you know a, a, a combination of testimonials and documentary and maybe even you know some kind of visualization what the future could look like, you know, that's why I wrote all this down. I wrote down these questions so that everybody can ask themselves. You know what is it that we wish or we desire uh, for for the future? What 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 is the future? You know what would I want for for myself, for my you know for for our child that's going to be born in December? Like uh, what is it that uh, you know instead of like repeating the root causes and the problems? You know what if we show, okay, what's the opposite of slavery, of modern slavery? What's the opposite of modern slavery then? What is the opposite of inflation? That's deflation, right? What is the opposite of, uh, of um, you know, of, of um, uh, hardship? Th that is prosperity and abundance. So I truly, I'm totally convinced, I just know that there is, that we have so much potential, so much human resources, creative potential, technological potential once that is unleashed but it needs I'm totally aware of that it needs a critical adoption rate and it needs some kind of, of acceleration and I think this film can in, not only inspire but really incentivize more and more people to understand like oh this is this is the future that you know that we are somehow with lowest time preference saving up to you know does it make sense? I, yes, uh, <laughs> I'd love to contribute somehow to a film, 
uh, Definitely. Uh, let me just say good night to my kids. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, the future for these these people <laughs> when they grow up. Uh, uh, I would love to contribute to a film in every, any way I can. And I think a, a good, and I would love for Kalle to be, debunk every stupid <laughs> idea we put out there. <laughs> yeah, we need, yeah, we, Tell need, us where we the need voices, really we need voices like Khaled because, yeah. you know, I think yeah. Khaled, Khaled, I think it has a role to ground us a little bit, like, like even ground yeah, me yeah, especially, yeah. like in my, we, we need, in my uh, fantasies, you know, like. Yeah, we, we, we need someone who actually knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not much of a visionary, but I, I can debunk some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, good thing. Yeah, and uh, I, Kevin, have you seen the Zeitgeist movies from like 15 years back? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, wasn't there like two or three parts of it? Like it was there were three part? parts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And those struck a chord with me when I saw them the first time. But I felt then, and I feel even more now, that the conclusion they drew was sl slightly off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I they, they like were the right in the. Yeah. No, they, they were completely right in their uh, analysis of organized religion and uh, money printing and mm -hmm. the state and all the institutions and everything. And how, how those are only social constructs and constructs of the human mind and how they are used to control pe huge amounts of people. <laughs> uh, but the, the missing thing from those films uh, is Bitcoin, of course. Uh, and if we make like a movie that is similar to that, but maybe, maybe, lo maybe, well, I, I know you like the sci-fi stuff, but maybe uh, uh, a, a, lit a bit less of that and a bit more like sound uh, things and talking about Bitcoin as a solution instead of everyone just magically being helpful to each other, because that simply doesn't happen <laughs> yeah yeah but that was that was the intention behind it like like interview uh you know a spectrum of people like you guys you know uh, economists technology scientists uh, people who really know what they're talking about especially in their respective field of science and technology or structural i'm really interested in structural transformation in structural changes this is because once we have the structural transformation as bitcoin is the ultimate stru structural change. I mean, once we change, once we transform the monetary root layer, everything else is going to be accelerated. I don't know why I'm so convinced about that, but that it will have sort of a cascading, you know, effect, a chain reaction, you know. Yeah, uh, I have one more to say good night to. <laughs> yeah, 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 go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay, and, uh, that's that's uh, that's what we said about Linux in '95. We said uh, this is going to be the year of the Linux de desktop, and '96 is going to be the year of the Linux de desktop. Uh, so there was a lot of hope in Linux that it would overtake the desktop market, but it didn't. Uh, it instead overtook the server market. Yeah, which so that's what we, that's... we will be uh, severely surprised. Uh, of what we'll see and hopefully pleasantly surprised. Yeah, that's that's the thing. The server market. I mean, Linux completely uh, ruled that thing right now. And yeah. Facebook is built on top of Linux, and Google is built on top of Linux, right? Kala, you know these things better than I do. But yeah, the, and, the whole network, the whole internet infrastructure yeah. uh, is Linux. Yeah. Yeah, and this is why. Uh, where Bitcoin should be, it should be in the base layer of everything. Like uh, that's much more. Important than uh, uh, than uh, unicorns is the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can only recommend you guys that whenever you have some time to to read this book by Titus Gebel, because this is you know this fusion of uh, Jeff Booth's book, The Price of Tomorrow: Why Deflation Is the Key to an Abundant Future, with Titus Gebel. Uh, somehow he founded uh, Free Private Cities, and there's the first official project now going on in Honduras. And I'm like, what if we don't just don't have one, two, three? It's not a special economic zone. It's a real free private zone where a service provider, a contractual partner, comes to you. You sign a contract, and you know instead of the government 
trying to you know provide the very essential services like you know security protection of liberty health life pro protection of property right it's property yeah. rights right what if we you know what if a contractual private partner can do that not only much more efficiently but much cheaper yep. those things are happening all over the place there, there's one guy building uh, like floating cities and there's Lieberstad in Norway which is like a, a part of Norway which the government can't get to I guess <laughs> because it's too deep in the forest and too high up the mountains or something uh, and uh, there's Lieberland in uh, like the border between some of the Balkan countries right or where, wherever that is uh, there are some some private nations there's a there's an old oil rig that some uh, crazy brit has uh, made his own flag for and lives in and <laughs> I, <laughs> like I, I, i'm not sure anyone lives in liberland no uh, <laughs> me neither <laughs> but they do accept bitcoin <laughs> uh, yeah. i saw the honduras one in a in a in another documentary i mm -hmm. believe uh but which was all smeared with shit coinery. <laughs> oh, really? The documentary was all about shit coins, yeah. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's the one aspect I just don't understand why Titus Gebel doesn't. Maybe maybe that's his blind spot, you know, because Bitcoin is itself inherently the free market. Why do we have to, you know to deal with all kinds of shit coins and other concepts? You know, Bitcoin is in, is in itself. Uh, the free market you know i think sven schneider wrote articles about that and a bunch of other people so um i think there's some if we can clarify or somehow enlighten these people with their specific expertise and knowledge like what bitcoin can do to you know make this more holistic and more rooted yep. then we have actually you know uh you know come a, a long way then yeah. so. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll see. Uh, uh, let's hope that uh, a number of states don't collude to uh, actually co-opt Bitcoin and, and make it theirs and uh, afford everyone to do KYC, with, uh, otherwise they'll censor your transactions. We'll, uh, let's, uh, let's hope they don't do that because that's going to be <laughs> that's going to be a complete mess. Um, so you don't think it's going to spur actually more competition once, you know, let's say, smaller or bigger countries start adopting uh, and, you know, uh, making it for, you know, their own? My, my hope is that smaller countries start start actually using Bitcoin, but but I don't see that happening. I, it's it's going to be a grassroots movement until the last drop of blood. <laughs> yeah, and I... Uh, I've been talking about this on a lot of pod, pods lately. Uh, how how countries how, how would that work? Uh, like, of course, custodial solutions, but someone would have to be in charge of the private keys. And have you have you thought about this, Kyle? Like, how how would you set up a multisig for government to? Uh, like, I mean, they can't even <laughs> they can't even take care of stuff now. So how the hell would they? How how would that even yeah. work? How how could a nation state own Bitcoin? They 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 redefine the concept of ownership because now knowing is owning. It's the same thing. The information about the underlying asset is the underlying yeah. asset. So so it's a whole different story. Nation states won't exist if this succeeds. I think every every politician signer will uh, will have to have a trusted uh, engineer. <laughs> yeah, and that. Yeah that engineer will be trustworthy until the day he isn't where he remembers the seed phrase and gets the fuck out of there yeah but if it's a 10 out of 12 multisig and there's uh, you, you could probably you could probably come pretty far with it uh, yeah i still but, think but it, it's it's not perfect but i think it's it still is perfect than you it is perfect it, that's the point. <laughs> okay <laughs> but but it's, st it's still better than uh, than actually joran passion or or stefan Löfven carrying his own key <laughs> yeah 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 uh but uh, by the way stefan Löfven is the prime minister of sweden mm -hmm. yeah unfortunately but uh the i think this opens a whole new can of worms but like uh uh how 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 would that actually work a nation state owning bitcoin or a large corporation owning bitcoin how would that actually work i mean 
Gemini is one two thing, but that's either too totally centralized, like uh, one or you know very few people hold the private the private keys in a multisig, or just centralized, totally centralized, or totally like like super multi signature, like like a bunch of people, like yeah, yeah, hundreds of but, people. Yeah. I, I... I think they have to use some kind of multi-sig solution, but uh, uh, I don't think they they will handle it themselves. They will they will use they have assistance for everything. So why don't they have an assistant for for managing the keys? Yeah, but this is my point. At uh, if if number keeps going up, <laughs> the, yeah. the, those persons will be more more uh, uh, powerful than the actual government, uh, like yeah. uh, hiring them. Sooner or later, yeah. this will happen. It's a transitioning yeah. thing, and and like, and you don't become a politician because you're interested in numbers and cryptography. <laughs> Politicians are are a, a strange breed because, the, yeah, they have some obvious flaws when it comes to logical thinking, and and I, I think this will help Bitcoin a lot, because so much will get lost uh, on the uh, on the way to them. I, I'm looking forward to nation states trying to hold Bitcoin a lot and seeing how that plays out and all the yeah, uh, and everything yeah. crashing. Finally, they are inversing the inflation. Mm. Yeah, Re we're trying to. Yeah. Trying to. <laughs> but uh, like, I, like I said, it will be a clusterfuck uh, of uh, unprecedented proportions. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. I'm pretty sure they can get uh, a decent security set up for them. Yeah. Uh, we'll I, I, I'm not we'll so. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, it's not going to happen anyway. So. <laughs> no, probably not. Not in that way. So you know what I'm really interested in is like showing, visualizing what the daily life of the average person can look like. Like, if you ask somebody, like, would you be, you know, would you, would you rather, you know, uh, live in an inflationary uh, system where where your money is worth less and less and less and the prices go up and up, or would you rather, pref would you prefer paying less and less for better and better services and products, more innovative uh, products, especially, you know, uh, would you, would you like to go into retirement, into pension, much earlier than than right now, you know. Uh, whatever age uh, you know people are going into retirement right now what is it 65 67 70 whatever so it's getting worse and worse so what about you know would you like to have more freedom uh more freedom more more free time to spend with your family with your children uh go more on vacation i mean all these things and, and all these hard work uh, hard jobs they're going to be more and more you know uh taken over by um by uh by technology, by whatever it is, you know, robotics, uh, self-driving cars. So this is the future. It's it's already evolving. It's already unfolding. It's just a matter of time, now, right? Yeah, but but it's not it's not unfolding in the right way yet because we're still working our asses off. Uh, a, a typical family, both both parents work full time or more, uh, still. Uh, so uh, so. Uh, we, we, I, I don't think we are in that process yet. Um, mm -hmm. no. No, not until we start adopting Bitcoin, yeah. <laughs> at least. I, I would say uh, that there's a book by a guy called Jeremy Rifkin called Zero Marginal Cost. Have you heard about this? Uh, no. it's, it's about how how the production and the transportation of everything approaches zero over time. The cost, the cost of manufacturing, the cost of uh, delivering stuff, and uh, one moment. And uh, this is uh, this combined with uh, with Bitcoin. I think will lead to a different society. Uh, about the question about what the everyday life will look like, like say you can do whatever you want every day, but you are not any longer incentivized to spend everything you have on frivolous things because everyone will still be more careful with their money since the prices are going down each day. So you always, you always have something to gain by 
lowering your time preference and waiting for the prices to go on go down even further and this is the beauty of the thing that you can have uh, better and better lives without spending more and more you see that that that's the that's the real transitioning thing I, I like to think about these things in absolute terms because it's easier if you if you see where the vector is pointing and you go to the end of the arrow, so to speak, mm -hmm. Kalle, if you're following me, <laughs> yes. like, so, so, so it's just for argument's sake that I take the hyper Bitcoinization scenario where everyone gets richer and richer by the day and all they have to do is like spend less and less on frivolous things mm -hmm. because you're incentivized to spend only on things that are more beneficial to you than holding the Bitcoin would have been. And those things are getting harder and harder to find, even now for, for, for Bitcoiners across the world, where, where there are more and more hodlers every, everywhere. We, we, we are more and more reluctant to spend our Bitcoins on actual stuff because we don't need stuff. Like the last thing I spent Bitcoin on was like a, a, a subscription to Hodlinos magazine. But, but I really feel that that is worth spending my uh, my uh, earned sats on, but few other things are. <laughs> so, so I think people would spend less and less on frivolous things and more and more on actual capital goods and productive things. And this is the key difference between what we have now, uh, uh, the Keynesian frivolous spending on whatever and build a bridge to nowhere and make it half ready and then abandon the project and like yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so we will s resources will be allocated a lot better and a lot more effective yeah and basically what we need is uh, is uh, food and sex then I'm happy yeah drinks drinks Drink, uh, and, and roof. Roof. <laughs> and a roof, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe an air conditioner, a toothbrush, maybe a laptop, yeah. a bed. <laughs> okay, okay. Basic stuff. Yeah. A Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, luxury. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. Let's wrap this up, uh, guys. So, w what is it? Um, is there anything coming up uh, on your on your side, like uh, another book or um, uh, any other projects which we can look out for? I have some ideas, but uh, nothing worth uh, nothing uh, worth uh, start worth starting another project for yet. But I have some ideas, just like something along the lines of. When, when the line between the imagination and reality is blurred out by, by the ability to put a QR code sticker on anything and changing mm -hmm. its value and like having, having value in your head and all this. And I would have to have Kalle proofread it again and uh, like hold me back a bit. <laughs> but but uh, I, I think this idea of making a movie, is, uh, it, uh, that's uh, very intriguing to me, Kevin. If we can pull this off and get a team together and like I would be happy to contribute to a, a screenplay. I always wanted to, to be in, to make a movie of some kind. <laughs> I don't know yeah, how yeah. and yeah. how to approach it, it but yeah. But, we uh, but uh, yeah. Knut, you're already in the entertainment business. You're a singer. You're a rock singer. I used to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why now I'm you? a Bitcoin. Uh, now I'm a Bitcoin uh, philosopher. I guess. <laughs> yeah. You could do the soundtrack. Yeah. No, but that's you know all these ideas that you have. I mean, I, I I'm just thinking that if we can, if we're able to visualize those for for you know broader audience for the mass of the people who don't read books, you know, who don't read articles, who don't go down the rabbit because they don't have time, they don't have no energy, no patience for that. But if we can reach them, you know, sort of over the visualized level, you know, would it be Netflix or YouTube or what whatsoever, but it just, you know, it, it, let's if we can give them a glimpse into the future. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Then we can. Did you see that last? Yeah. Did you see that last film about Bitcoin that came out? Uh, uh, what the what was it called? Uh, oh, something about gold or something. Something about money. Oh, 
What was it called? It was hard, really hard good. Hard remember. Hard film? No, you don't. Not hard film, right? The hard, hard, money, hard money film. film. Yeah, hard money yeah, film. By Richard James. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, he did it actually. Yeah, with Richard zero budget, James. With zero budget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's excellent. So if you haven't seen yeah. that, shout out to Richard James and go and see that film, Hard Money. Yeah. It's really good. Hardmoney.com, I think the website yeah. is. And, and also uh, talk with other uh, one guy. Yeah. yeah, you should contact a guy, another Swede, called uh, Joni Appelberg. Oh, I know this guy. (laughs) I contacted this guy a long time ago. He does beautiful uh, animations. Beautiful animations. And he stopped doing them a while back. And uh, I'd really yeah. like to see him on the scene again because I thought his uh, his little animations they were really excellent stuff. Yeah, yeah, I love his work. Yeah, because it really it visualizes. Yeah. You know, it it breaks things yeah. down for, for and the hi- really high quality stuff. And I I, I think he's criminally under, underrated in this space. <laughs> so shout out to Joni Appelberg. Exactly. Yeah. Start doing Absolutely. Bitcoin stuff again. Yeah. So, Kale, uh, Knut, thank you so much. I really enjoyed our talk. We should repeat those talks maybe in the near future, uh, maybe uh, maybe in a different tangent uh, next time. Uh, I have some other ideas too, but I think we can keep this now to approximately an hour. Uh, where can people find you and uh, where are your books available besides Amazon? Kale. Yeah, yeah, you can find me on Twitter. I'm, uh, I'm at Kale Rosenbaum on Twitter, and you can uh, read my book. Either you buy it from Amazon, Grokking Bitcoin, or you get it directly from the publisher, Manning.com. Or if you want to try before buy, you can you can uh, go to the open source version, which is at uh, https colon slash slash rosenbaum.sc slash book. OK, you got to write that down. OK. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, yeah, you cool. can find my books on Amazon. Uh, you can find my books on Amazon. They're called Sovereignty Through Mathematics and Independence Reimagined. Uh, and they're translated into a couple of other languages. Uh, German and an Italian version of Sovereignty is coming out soon and to finish. Uh, and a couple of other languages in the pipe. But meanwhile, I'm at Knut Svanholm in, uh, uh, on Twitter. That's at K N U T S V A N H O L M, and uh, my my first book is available for free uh, on the Crypt Economy podcast. Not many people know this, but it's in uh, episode three hundred and eight of what is now Bitcoin Audible podcast. But it was used to be called it, it used to be called the Crypt Economy podcast with Guys One. So yeah. it's all there with guys' comments and everything. Yeah, and, but, and the books are both audible as well. Yep. Yeah, it's an audible. And uh, don't forget my articles in and everyone else's articles in Citadel 21. This yeah, shout out fantastic to magazine yeah, here behind definitely. me. Definitely. We'll check it out. Well, thanks so much, guys, and hope to talk to, again soon. But you know, let's 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 you know let's let's sleep over this whole idea and brainstorming because I think it's it could be really effective if it's done with the it's, right creative people. Yeah, should you? Maybe we should start a, a Telegram group, Kevin, for a, yeah, for a yeah. Bitcoin movie. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. And maybe you know we'll, we can bring in also Guy Swan because he has some film experience, Richard James, uh, and other filmmakers. Yeah, absolutely. And creative people, music. And you know, uh, yeah, and and American Hoddle to fund it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we already talked to him, but he actually wanted to produce some of it. He didn't want to, you know, uh, come up with two hundred fifty thousand US dollars. So really? Yeah, he, he was thinking like I don't know. I didn't. I, I wasn't even thinking that much, but. Um, but you know, I mean, but I think we can have it crowdfunded if the if the yeah. teaser, if the trail is really good, it goes really into the hearts and brains of the people. I think we can have it crowdfunded. You know. Yeah, we should start a Kickstarter for it and yeah. do the whole thing. Yeah. But so you're looking for a, a Kevin, You're looking for a full length movie. Eventually, yeah, but for now, just a, like a five to ten minutes tease and trailer where we can yeah. really reach the masses, like like something that is really visual, something like a movie, you know, something that that is not you know not too far off, but that somehow it 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 reaches people in the hearts, in their brains, in their comprehension level, 
like why are we doing this you know <laughs> why bitcoin you know yeah all right yeah so thanks let's, so much let's again, think guys. about this yeah thank you kevin thank Have you for reaching night. out okay yeah. thank you very much yeah Bye, Kevin. Thank thank you, Bye, thanks goodbye Hope you love this conversation with Carla Rosenbaum and Knut Svalenholm, uh, some of the brightest and you know most brilliant uh, authors in the Bitcoin space. Now again, you know we need it's so urgent that we translate now this knowledge, this this vision, so we have this comprehension into a film, into a movie. It's got to be tangible. People got to feel it, like really feel it, really in the hearts, in the brains on every comprehension level, because each, you know, we are all individuals, of course, but we need to make it more tangible. What does it mean at all? Why Bitcoin? What does the daily life of the average person gonna look like? And if we don't have like the, you know, the, the, the conviction, the trust, the knowledge, the comprehension, and, you know, if we don't really truly believe in what we know, what we understand, then how we expect to other people, how we, how we really expect other people, you know, to believe in, in the future of Bitcoin. We got to have the intention, the really strong intention to make this happen. If you're in the film industry, movie industry, whatever, music, graphic, creativity, entertainment, or you are, you know, an OG or you want to, you know, f uh, help us produce or you want to be executive producer, a sponsor, please get in touch with me. My email address is hello at the totalconnector.com or kd at kvandavani.com. And you can, you know, my DMs are open. Get in touch with me. Let's make this happen. It's a one shot opportunity that we can give ourselves, our children, the children of our children, and, you know, all beloved ones and total humanity. Let's make, you know, let's, I know this is possible. I know this is reality, but we, you know, we've been maybe you just, uh, maybe, you know, most people have lost hope and, and don't even know, you know, what is, what is, what is realistic? What is, uh, what is possible, you know, especially on a scientific technological level on, on, you know, in the dimension of freedom, you know, we, we can have thousands, hundreds of millions of free private cities out there, right? What if we have totally new transportation systems? What if we already have them, we can mass produce them? What if you pay less and less and less for more and more better and more innovative un and unimaginable innovative products and, and services, right? So yeah, it, it, it is a totally, it will be totally new life in a deflationary economics because you can then finally do what you've always dreamt of, would it be painting, art, music, teach children, do research, go into science, technology, or, you know, uh, do something that really, you know, is a, is a, that not only you love doing it, but because you, you know, it's the ethos of your, of your heart, of your brain, of your soul, and you can really serve uh, humanity, right? So let's do this, let's make this happen. And if you are, you know, if you are, if you can help us in any shape or form, get in contact with me, Make sure you follow Kala Rosenbaum and Knut Svalenholm, some of the brightest authors I've met. And well, thank you so much for support. And let me know any questions you have, any suggestion, any, anybody you know, you know, uh, that can help us. I would really appreciate any kind of feedback or support uh, from, from any kind of, uh, you know, uh, sector out there. And thanks so much again. Talk to you soon.